Hello, my beautiful friends. It's Amanda here, and today we're looking at part two of my Sephora VIB sale spring sales event haul. I know you're seeing this more than a month after the sale, and there are a couple reasons for that. First of all, this was definitely a late in the game, 11th hour purchase. It was kind of an impulse buy. There were a bunch of pricey items on my list that I just felt like I really wanted to try and I wanted to get them during the sale. Also, I am pre-filming a bunch of content because I'm going on a few trips. I have family members coming to visit, my husband's birthday. May, June is just a really busy time for me with personal life stuff. And so I'm pre-filming a bunch of videos now that you will see over the next few weeks so that I have some footage in the bank so that I can keep posting videos, blah, blah, blah. What that all boils down to is I have some more sale items here that I haven't used yet and we're gonna try them on today. In fact, I am wearing every single one of my items with the exception of this fragrance. I picked up another fragrance. This is from Jo Malone. It's the Wood Sage and Sea Salt Cologne. It's a little baby and you know what? I feel like this was probably very expensive for this little tiny fragrance, but I've gone through now three samples of this. I've worn it a lot, I've loved it. I really like mixing this and layering it with other scents as well. So I know that this is going to be a smart buy because I know that I'm gonna use this up and enjoy it. I had a lot of fragrances on my wish list, so I guess I am a perfume girly now. This is the nine milliliter size, so this will be cute for traveling, putting in my purse, you know, you wanna do a little makeup touch up, a little fragrance touch up. So I did pick up some pretty pricey items and I'll tell you, not everything in this haul is a hit. Just gonna put the spoiler out there. I have a skin tint, a concealer, two lip products, a blush, and a mascara. And you're gonna get to see me try everything on. So before I just give away all of my feelings, let's go back in time to Amanda with no makeup and you can check out all of these products in action. And I'm gonna give you some of my thoughts along the way and then I'll wrap up all of my thoughts at the end now that I've been wearing this for a couple hours. Let's start with the lip products first. I have this Dior Lip Glow Oil. This is the shade Mahogany. I've never tried this particular lip oil before and I have to say I am pleasantly surprised. I do like this better than the Clarins one that has a similar doe foot, the big chonky doe foot applicator. And then I have, of course, my beloved Dior Lip Glow Color Reviver Balm. This is in a new shade. It's called Warm Beige. So I realize that I have a bougie lip balm addiction. We're just, we're just going to go with it. Here are some swatches. These are just some quick swiped on swatches. These are not super pigmented. They're not really meant to be super in your face color type of cosmetics. These are really like makeup meets skincare type of lip products, which I love and it's why I continue to use these and go back to them all the time. I will put the lip oil on later in the video so you'll get to see that one on my lips as well. Now we're going to try out this Tower 28 Sunny Days Broad Spectrum SPF Tinted Sunscreen Foundation. I'm using shade number 15, Melrose, and before I apply anything, I'm just gonna show you what my skin looks like up close. I don't have any makeup or any primer or anything on. This is just my face after my morning skincare, a little bit of moisturizer, nothing too heavy because I don't want to interfere with the skin tint. And then I'm going to put this on just one side of my face. That way we can get a true side-by-side, -side, see what the coverage looks like, what the finish looks like. And it does seem to be a pretty decent match as far as color goes. And because the coverage is so light with this product, it is going to be pretty forgiving as far as the tone goes. Obviously, the closer you get, the better. 
but this is quite sheer so I think that you will have a little bit of wiggle room on the shades if you decide to pick this up. So here's a little side by side. I have the Sunny Days tinted sunscreen foundation on one side and then just nothing on the other half of my face. And you can tell it is evening out some redness. It's evening out some of the discoloration. I think you can tell at this point, it does have a little bit of a dewy glowy finish, but it already looks a little bit dry in my dry patches my dry problem areas on my face which is mainly around my nose definitely around my mouth and also in the center of my forehead like right between my eyebrows so we will check in on those spots later after I wear this for a few hours spoiler alert it doesn't really do that well it definitely doesn't ever look good around my nose even from this initial application I could tell it wasn't really doing it for me. It's not super noticeable unless you really zoom in and really look up close, but honestly, it's kind of my job as a reviewer to do those things for you. So you can tell here just from a few inches away, it looks fine, but as soon as you start to really get up close, especially around the nose area, you can really tell that it's just not quite jiving with my skin perfectly. It looks okay. It's not terrible, but keep in mind, I just put this on, so not usually the best sign if it looks a little bit patchy and broken apart as soon as it goes on to the skin. I've definitely worn worse, and I think if I pair this with something more hydrating underneath, it might do better. It's just not so great. Anyway, let's move on to this Milk Makeup Sunshine Under Eye Tint and Brighten. I use the shade number one, and I really purchased this because the Milk Makeup Sunshine Skin Tint is one of my absolute favorite products. It's something that I use and wear often and genuinely really enjoy. So I am expecting this product to give me that same sort of feeling. Now, I do think that the shade, again, is very forgiving. This one is maybe a little bit light, but I do think that the Sunshine Skin Tint shade that I use is a little bit more golden than I prefer, a little bit warmer than I prefer. So I do think that this mixed with my Sunshine Skin Tint shade could really end up evening one another out and making a perfect shade for me. This is not intended to be a very coverage concealer type of product, and it's not. It's definitely brightening. It's definitely a soft tint, which works well considering that I'm only wearing a skin tint anyway, and that is typically my go-to. So if you're looking for a lot of coverage, you probably won't love this. Personally, I quite like the way it looks, and I like this very light coverage effect. Now off camera, I added some brow gel and just a little bit of powder because I do have a very dewy finish and I am gonna be adding some blush. So I wanted to do just a little bit of powder to lock in the skin tints, plural, that I had on. I added a little bit of that Dior Lip Glow Oil on top. I just wanted to keep trying everything and I really needed a win. I knew I was gonna like that lip oil and speaking of wins, let's put on this House Labs Color Fuse Blush. This is a beautiful, warm coral shade. I absolutely love the way it looks. It's not so pigmented that it's hard to use. It's not so sheer that I feel like nothing's going on. It's just a beautiful, perfect, satiny matte type of formula. I absolutely love this shade. I love this formula. This is definitely one of my top favorite things that I purchased at any point during the Sephora sale. So that is definitely a good feeling. I just can't say enough good things. I could tell from the moment I put this on that I was going to love it and that it made me look good, feel good. It's just beautiful. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is the Lancome Edole Mascara. I believe that I purchased this because of a subscriber recommendation, so 
please don't hate me when I say this. I don't think this mascara is that great. It's definitely not bad. There's nothing actually wrong with it. I just think that it's maybe a little bit too natural and wispy for me. It's perfect for my lower lashes, but it's just not giving me enough on my upper lashes. So I like it. I don't love it. I may have to use it as a layering mascara with something a little more volumizing on top, but it didn't flake off, it didn't smudge, and it does, it looks soft and pretty. So I see the appeal. I just need to keep using it, I think. So obviously this is really a first impressions and not a wear test. I can't give you the world's most thorough review because I've only been wearing these things today, but I've reviewed a lot of makeup in my time and I definitely think that there's something to be said for first impressions. Obviously, this isn't the be-all, end-all. I want to continue wearing these things, trying them in different combinations, particularly the face products and the mascara. I think those need a little bit more time for me to really decide how I feel, but let's just do a quick rundown. Okay, starting with the face products, I want to try this under eye tint and brighten product with a skin tint foundation or whatever that I am more familiar with so that I can really get a sense of how this will work in my daily life. My gut reaction is that I like this under eye product more than this tinted sunscreen. Everything looks really good from far away, but close up, this just looks maybe a little bit patchy. It already looks like it's kind of breaking up in some places and it definitely doesn't melt into the skin the way I want it to. There are spots on my skin already after not even wearing this all day long that I can tell this is sort of sitting on top of the skin and not really giving me that this is what your skin looks like type of feeling that I want from a tinted sunscreen or a skin tint in general. So like I said, from what would be, you know, a basic conversational distance. If you and I were here in person and you were sitting across the table from me, I think it looks good. But when I start to look up close, I can see my problem areas are definitely giving problems, especially the nose and around the nose and around my mouth. I just think it looks really heavy and it looks like it's breaking up a little bit. Obviously, I'm going to give it another shot. I'm going to try maybe putting a little hydrating primer underneath because I had just only done skincare and moisturizer. So I'm not counting this out yet, but it's not the instant love type of product that I've had with the Beauty Blender Bounce Skin Tint and the M Cosmetics Cushion Foundation. Those were both instant loves for me, and this one is not an instant love. I think that this just doesn't really have a chance to shine because it's on top of a product that I'm already not feeling. So far, neither one of these are going to the top of my favorites. Happy to report that I like both of these. I already knew that I liked these Dior Lip Glow Reviver Balms. This is my third one. I don't feel bad about buying expensive tinted lip balms because this is a product that I use all the time. I throw it in my purse, I reapply often, and I use these up. I have three colors. They all pretty much look the same. So, you know, lesson learned. I'm probably not going to buy any more of these in the near future, at least not until I use one or two of these up, which I'm already about halfway through the first one that I purchased. The lip oil definitely feels good. It has sort of a fresh mint smell to it, but it's not a tingly, plumping, buzzing, stinging your lips type of minty. So I'm happy about that. These definitely looked really pretty together. Again, this is a go-to type of product for me. So happy to report that these expensive AF lip products are both things that I really like. And the last two products are the Lancome Idol Mascara and this House Labs Blush. I love the blush. I've had a great experience with their bronzers and highlighters, so I'm not surprised that I really, really enjoy this. I think this corally pink color is going to be beautiful for spring and summer looks. I see myself gravitating towards this a lot. And I do think this is probably the biggest hit of this particular haul. 
The mascara, I need to use it more, but it didn't change my life the way I want an expensive mascara to do. I feel like I'm just as happy or happier with my $5 Essence mascara. My lashes look good. They look a little bit longer. They look a little bit darker, but it's just, I don't know. Maybe it's because I have such dark eyeshadow on today. Again, obviously I'm going to use this and completely use it up, but I don't know that this is going to be something that I run out and repurchase necessarily. You know, they can't all be hits. Overall, I feel like I got some great stuff here that I'm going to continue to wear, continue to test. I already know that there are some new favorites waiting in the wings here. I did film this eyeshadow look according to my schedule. This tutorial should already be available by the time this Sephora video comes out. We're working on a schedule. I'm trying my best. Things may not fall into place exactly like I planned. I'm gonna try my best to be flexible with that. Now's the time when I want to hear what you think about this little haul. Did I pick up any of your favorite items here? Is there something that you think I need to add to my loves list for the next Sephora sale? I always love to hear what you think about things too, so make sure you leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Anyway. Jazz hands. I don't know what I'm doing.